I was watching um, on Sunday the church that I um, go to online and I was thinking about not so much the pastor but his wife and how I how I've seen her come come forward um, this past season in the pandemic um, like when I started tuning into the church um, sh she used to speak but not very often at all um, maybe once a year or twice a year um, it was funny because the pastor joked and said <laughs> it was a Mother's Day sermon and he was doing the Mother's Day sermon and he said my wife said if I if I got her up here she would leave me <laughs> as a jo as a joke and now I've like from last year to this year she's done se like about seven sermons if I count 2020 and two in 2021 already so from a woman who hardly spoke a sermon a year if that to seven very powerful sermons like both this year and last um God has really like expanded her ministry apart from her husband and she, she has her own YouTube channel and I was and on Sunday uh, I was thinking about this person and the Lord said to me uh, sh she's awakening and the Lord uh, brought this sermon to my heart um, and I'm calling it God's heart for the lionesses well this sermon is basically well it's for women but the men can can glean from it too and I will uh, do one probably Sunday or next week God's heart for the lions but this one is for um, the lionesses, the women out there. Um, for generations, women have been kept back, not paid enough, not treated f fairly, not really, not really have been given their due. Um, but. Uh, the Lord is now calling women to do two things. No, to do three things. Arise. No. Oh, first of all, the Lord is calling women to awake, arise, and come forth. So, he's calling women to awake, which means to basically wake up. Um, there are things inside of you, sister, that you haven't even tapped into, and you, you know you feel a call, a, a pull towards something, but you're afraid you're backing away, you're like, oh, they won't listen to me, I'm just a woman, but the Lord is calling you, sister, to awake. To awake from your sleep and to take your place as the lioness you are and to roar and it's and it doesn't mean to usurp the man or the lion in your house it means to stand beside beside him and um, and to take your your proper place beside him it doesn't mean you have this um a woman doesn't 
Um, a, a woman doesn't function like a man, but she, um, but she can, can speak and can, uh, have her vision too. And it doesn't mean that woman usurp and take over. It means that a woman takes her place. And her place is not always in the home. See, I think men got it confused. A woman's place is where wherever God puts her. Whether it be in her home with her family or whether it be on the business field. And let us not, um, let us not judge her for wherever God puts her. If God put you at home to be a mom, and that's all he's, that's what he's called you to be, do it and do it well and step up and take your place as their mom. Feed into them. Teach them the lessons that you need to teach your children. Um, be there for them. Do that. If the Lord has called you to be a woman in business, do that to the best of your ability. Go far. Just do whatever he's called you to do. And this sermon right now is for the sleeping women. The, the women who have been sleeping on their gifting and waiting for some prince charming to come and sweep them away. Um, but God, has, God didn't design marriage to uh, be a substitute for his purpose in you. Let me say that again. God didn't design marriage or a man to be a substitute for his purpose in you. So you waiting for a man to kind of complete you is, is not uh, going to going to happen because God didn't design a man to complete a woman on that level. God designed men and, and women to walk together. The Bible says can two walk together except they be agreed. So God designed men and women to walk together and the Bible says that um, wives, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church, and wives, wives submit to your husbands. But we often don't quote when it says, husbands submit to your wives. So it's mutual submission. It's not just one party submitting to another. Um... And when we break down the word submission, it actually, it doesn't mean you do what I say and whatever, I have the last word as the man. Uh, no, it means to stand under a mission. If you take a look at the uh, prefix of submission, it's sub, like submarine, um, like subordinate, um, like anything that starts with sub, it means to stand under. And mission means a cause, so, or a calling. So basically, submission is to... A, a woman's job is to stand 
under the mission that God has set for her family. So, God revealed it to me like this. The man gets the mission for the family from God. A woman stands under that, that mission that her husband got from God. And the children follow her. But that does not mean at all that she cannot have vision, she cannot have purpose, she cannot do ministry. That was not the purpose of that. The purpose of, of God's thing for the, uh, God's, the purpose of the, um, structure, the, the purpose of the structure of the family was just to provide order so that we're all not scrap scrambling and we're all a mess. And that was God's order. That's how he originally set it up. And um, so back, back to awakening. So if you're, if you're using that, Women, oh, I have to wait for my husband to uh, step into the the vision that God has called me to. You don't. If he's given you a dream, if he's given you a business idea, if he's given you a calling, he's saying now to awake, to awake from your sleep and and take your place. And do your call, and um, achieve your calling. He's saying to wake up. He's saying that many women, especially in the body of Christ, have been sleeping too long, have been hiding around, um, have been hiding for too long. And in Proverbs, he says. Awake, thou sluggard, um, the writer of Proverbs says that we call calls lazy people sluggards, and he says um, some of you you know what you're supposed to do, you know what you're called to do, but you're 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 waiting, and your excuse is like you're waiting on God. But the Lord wants me to t tell you today, he's waiting on you. You know what he's told you to do. You know the steps he to he's told you to take. So take them. He's saying to arise and, st and stop stalling and stop um, doing everything. You've done your research. You've done that, all that thing in, in secret, but it's now time for you to awake and come out to, to the light. And the next thing he's saying is to arise. He's saying, he's saying it's time for the women of God to arise, to stand up and take their place as women, as as equals in what we do but not in how we function women and men are equal in what they can do but not in how they function we we were designed differently for a reason because he wants the two parts to come together as a whole not for each other but to worship him not two parts like I'm incomplete without a man, but two whole people coming together to create other whole people that can worship him. So he, God gave women special char characteristics of nurturing, of loving, of all of that stuff. And God gave men other characteristics of logic, of 
um, um, all these other characteristics that he did give us because he wants us to match each other. But you see in today's society, when we come out of our God-given roles, um, not in what we do, but how, how God has ordained us to function together, um, it's a mess. And I'm not saying that, um, I'm not using roles as in a woman can take care of the baby and a man can go out to work. No, no. My thing is anybody can take care of a baby. A man can change a diaper. A man can clean the house. A man can do all that. A woman can go out to work. A woman can drive a tractor, be a firefighter, all of that. Those are tasks. Anyone can do tasks. But it's how how they they function in the system of the family that's where it has to come from because the reason why there's so many messed up families is because the order is out of whack first of all in some families there's no man man so there's no way to get vision and and the women have to be the visionary and do and take care of the family and it can be done it can be done very well but i don't believe it was god's original uh purpose um but that being said he's calling now women to arise to stand up and to take their place and to achieve their purpose and if God is calling you to to do something, sister, um, he'll give you the means and the know-how to do it. All you have to do is take the first step. You have to arise spiritually, arise emotionally, and take your place. Take the place that God has given you. He's saying, I've given you the keys to the kingdom. Now use them. There are songs inside of you, sister. There are um, magazines inside of you. There are books inside of you. There's writing inside of you. And you just need to grasp it. Um... And now I'm saying, uh, I did awake, I did arise, and now come forth. He's saying, once we've awakened from our sleep, and once we stand up and take our place, now we need to come forth. He's saying, just step forward and do it. Step forward and do what he's called you to do. You've been hiding in the shadows for too long. You've been hiding behind your husband, hiding behind your kids, hiding behind everything for too long. He wants you to know that you are as essential to his purpose as any man. I'll say that again. You are as essential to his purpose as any man. And he wants you to come forth with his glory on you and understand that he didn't make you a girl to just sit around and look pretty. You are a lioness and he expects you to stand up to to stand up and come forth 
into the purpose he's called you to called you to and the and he like he doesn't want you to just have those children he wants you to impart to them to to give them wisdom to give them knowledge share your story with your children there was no greater honor that than when my mother shared her story with me that taught me about a lot about who she was and a lot about who um i was in turn a lot of her issues and it allowed me to identify where some of my issues were coming from because some issues that children grow go through are generational and if they don't know if your daughters don't know that you went through that they might not know why they are going through that and and they won't be able to break it and the cycle will continue and continue and continue um sometimes cycles continue because sister you will you will not tell your adult children what you went through you will not give them insight into who they are because of um uh because of who you were and sometimes i know it's embarrassing but but the lord is saying come forth with your story yes lord he's saying now come forth women with your story tell what you've been through tell your pain tell your so- sorrow and also tell the good stuff because wisdom is the principal thing thing and paul said older women need to teach the younger women um i find i think a lot of what's missing now are the elders like the the older women the older women that know how to do things that the younger women don't know what to do we're both so busy older and younger women that we don't take time to teach or take time to learn from people of wisdom people of knowledge and let me speak to the younger women my generation and younger all seasoned women know things that we don't know when i say when i say seasoned women i mean women who have been through the seasons of life so when they're trying to talk to you and tell you things don't just don't just shake it off and say oh you're old school that was back then take their wisdom they know what they're talking about because Solomon said there is nothing new under the sun and we can learn from them we can learn a lot from them and i think if we start talking to the older the seasoned women in our lives will gain a whole lot of wisdom that that they had to learn th- through hard knocks and we don't have to go that route so so god is calling women once again to awake which means awake from our sleep wake up and see what's going on have have the eyes of Issachar that um we can we can foretell we know about the times and seasons and he's calling us to arise 
to stand up flat-footed and to take our place and stop being cowards as women. Stop huddling in the corner and to rise and take our place. And that doesn't mean just I'm usurping your power and I'm trying to be as a man. Uh, as a man is, sometimes arising means um, talking with gentleness, talking with love, talking with um, just the quiet strength. Sometimes this person I'm talking about this person I talked about in in the beginning of the sermon, she walks with such a quiet strength, a quiet demeanor. So strength isn't always overpowering. Sometimes when you tell women to arise and take their place, they they have to um, overpower and be aggressive. That's not that's not real power. That's kind of you're trying to show off and show how bad you are. But real power sometimes comes in the quiet strength of a woman. The quiet strength of a woman. The way she talks to her husband, not yells at him, but quietly quietly says to him her opinion and they can reason together and she can say come let us reason together you sister you don't have to be hard to be heard i'll say that again you don't have to be hard to be heard some women are so hard because they've had to fight to be heard and it, it's created calluses on their heart. And today the Lord is saying, you don't have to be hard to be heard. And you can be assertive without being aggressive. I have I have an issue with this too. I I'm I think in my personality I'm way too passive. But the Lord's teaching me is you don't have to be aggressive to be assertive. Assertive means that you just state your position. You don't have to state it loudly, you can state it quietly. You state your position without moving on it. That's what Assertive means. Aggressive means you try and be powerful and try and um, force your way into a circumstance. He doesn't want women to be aggressive. He wants women to be assertive. If you know something is yours, just state it quietly. Just state it quietly. And the best thing you could do is state it over again. Say it over and over and over again until the person gets. You're not moving on it. Sister, you are no pusher over. You are a child of the king and he's created you and you belong at that company. Let no one push you around and be, be, you can be quiet about it. You don't have to be forceful about it. And the way to be quiet and still be assertive, just keep repeating the same, the same words over again. Um, one time I had an issue, and I'm not a very loud person, but one time I had an issue with this person, and the only thing I did was keep repeating that, no, this is what I want. And they said, they said, but this is this. And I said, no, this is what I want. And then I kept repeating on it. And then the person backed down because they said they figured out that I wasn't moving. Be not easily moved in this season. In this season. Be not easily moved. 
if you know the Lord has told you something, if you know the Lord has called you to do something, let no one talk you out of it. I'm not saying to not have wise counsel, because the Bible says in a multitude of counselors there is safety, but at the same time, be not moved. And find other other women that understand where you're going. Find other people, women or men, who understand where you're going. Ask God to send you those people that understand where you're going. You've been on the periphery for too long. You have too much in you, girl, to to sit back and let life happen to you. Take it by the horns. And do with it God, what God has purposed you to do. There's too much in you. There's too much work to do. There's too much on the battlefield, on the business field, on the mission field. For you to sit back with what you have in your, your heart. What God has put in you. To just lay back and say, okay, somebody else will do it. No, somebody else won't do it. He's called you to raise those children. He's called you to run those that business. He's called you to do that ministry. He's called you to great things. Sister, there is great things inside of you, great things in store for you. All you need to do is take that first step. Even afraid. <laughs> um, this pastor's wife said something great on Sunday. She said, there is no faith without fear. So, because if you don't have fear, you don't need faith. You just do it. So, if you feel fearful, good. Do it anyway. Do it with hand shaking. Do it. Do it with no money. Do it with no resources. And there's always a will. Where there's a will, there's a way to get God's purpose done. He's given you all you need to achieve what you need to achieve. And he and he's and he's also saying start raising your children. Not just feeding them and clothing them and helping them with online school or in-person school. Start, start raising them. Start sharing with them your story. Start sharing with them your wisdom. Talk to them, women. Talk to them, women. Talk to them, women. Because your children are dying to talk to you. I don't have children, but this is what the Lord is telling me to say. Your children are dying to talk to you, and you might not think that they're listening, but they are. And when you talk to your t children, let them say what they're feeling, although it may not be what you might think or what, what might be right in your eyes. Let them say what they're feeling and have a discussion with them as early as three about their days. And because when you do that, when they're in trouble, when they're 13, they'll come to you. I don't know why I'm going here, but um, um, you, you can't start parenting when they're 13. You have to start parenting from young. I'm not talking about only feeding, dressing, all of that. But you need to start talking to your kids from young. And you need to start letting them know who God is. You need to start showing them who God is from really young. And it's not the church's job to do it. It's your job. It's not the pastor's job or or your uh, your children's pastor's job or your youth leader's job. That's your job. 
invite them when they come, when you go to pray, invite them to come and just watch you pray. All those little um, prayers that we do for children, they they work when the child is about two or three, but when they get about six, they need to start really knowing who God is and knowing how to pray and knowing how to seek the Lord. I think that's one of that's one of my prayers when I become a mom. Um, it's to actually have my children to have a real relationship with God because I'm not th- because when I'm not there, God is there and he can speak to them. But if there's no relationship, there'll be nothing to draw from. Um, so thank you guys for listening today. I hope you got something out of this. Thanks. Bye. Remember women, awake, arise, come forth. Awake, arise, come forth. This is God's heart for the lioness.